right for you. Live team coverage on Tropical Storm Fay and all her rain in the morning. WTLV NBC 12, a First Coast News Station. Dozens of homes in Florida ripped apart by Fay's fury the first time around. Now the First Coast prepares for a second strike from the storm, one that could be even more intense. Good evening, I'm Donna Deegan. And I'm Shannon Ogden. Well, tonight, the First Coast, as you probably know, is under a hurricane watch as Boomerang Faye threatens to leave Florida and then come back to Florida. Let's go straight to our chief meteorologist, Tim Deegan, with some new tracking information. Where is she now and where is she going? Thanks, Shannon. And so for those of you who just joined us, why Boomerang? Because Faye is now headed still to the north and northeast and yet expected to make that hard, sharp turn, boomerang, right back to the west and northwest. A lot of ifs in the forecast, so let's take a look at all the data that we have at the present time. Here are the latest numbers, 27.7, 80.7. That's 200 miles south of Jacksonville. The good news, finally, faded weekend. Sustained winds of 50, gusts of 60. More significantly, in my viewpoint, the pressure has come up some now to 990 millibars, although I must say, um, meteorologically, that is still the structure of at least a near hurricane tropical cyclone but at least we're seeing the winds come down and the pressure come up a little bit we can go into the radar because the radar really gives us the land truth as far as what's happening right now the tight center is no longer uh, visible detectable on the radar so that's good news although we can certainly see a circulation center and the circulation center is taking longer than forecast that's good news but this center that came ashore during the morning about 5 a.m. near Cape Romano, just to the south of Naples, and then went along the coast of Lake Okeechobee, is about ready to make it onto the coast and is already drawing off the warmer waters of the Atlantic. So with all that said, here is the official forecast track for Fay. Still, the idea is it's going to head offshore by about 90 miles, re-intensify as a hurricane, and come back ashore. We'll break it down for you county by county and day by day in just a few minutes. All right, Tim, thank you very much. Now we have live team coverage with reporters up and down the coast tonight. First Coast News' Ryan Duffy is live in Flagler County. And Ryan, you are starting to see some more of that rain, some of those bands coming in. Yeah, we are starting to see the first real heavy rain of the night here. It is a driving, steady rain right now. But this beach has been pretty busy all night. Everyone anxious to see just how bad this storm will get. All along A1A at Flagler Beach, people wanted to get a look at what was coming. I love it. I love it. Makes you feel alive. <laughs> Debbie Wilson came out with her dog to see Faye before the worst moved in. We've lived in Palm Coast for 21 years, and when something like this is going on, you just, you just like to see what's happening and hope that the beach erosion isn't taking over. And Living here, she's seen several storms and hurricanes and the damage they've done to this beach. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if part of A1A don't end up getting closed because when high tide starts coming in, yeah. it'll get bad. Uh, we saw the end of the pier disappear one, uh, one time and they've done a lot of work here and there's been quite a bit of beach erosion. Sections of Flagler Beach were rebuilt just three years ago. And tonight, as Faye rolled in, the question is how much beach will be left when she leaves? And the last time a tropical storm did go through here a few years ago, A1A did have to be closed, and that could easily happen again. There's just that small strip of sand separating ocean and highway. Reporting live at Flagler Beach, Ryan Duffy, First Coast News, your news leader. All right, thank you, Ryan. And while we wait to see what Faye has in store for the First Coast, people across Florida are dealing with floods, flooded roads, down power lines, and down trees. It certainly has been a soaker so far, leaving behind as much as 10 inches of rain in some areas. Police had to close several roads as water reached knee-high depths. A tornado spawn from Faye has left a horse stable severely damaged down in Wellington, southwest of West Palm. The stable was lifted from its foundation. It was thrown through the air to a courtyard nearby. The horse, though, was not hurt. And in Marco Island, cleaning crews were out to remove downed tree limbs after Faye came ashore near Naples early this morning. Well, on a lot of the minds of parents, certainly what's going to be happening with the schools, we've gotten a good idea of what's going right, on there. Here's what we know. Public schools in Duval County closed on Wednesday and Thursday. Right now, Clay, Nassau, and Putnam County open. And we're also running there, as you can see at the bottom of your screen, to running what's called a crawl, 
We'll have a list of schools and city businesses and services that will be closed tomorrow. And you can track um, the storm. Check out the latest at firstcoastnews.com for the very latest. So we just talked to Jacksonville Mayor John Payton. He is encouraging local businesses to be a little lenient with employees who need to prepare. Thinking is, look, families need time to prepare, and we're, we're assuming there's going to be a Category 1 hurricane coming to this community based on the National Weather Service most recent forecast. So we hope that employers, you know, take our lead and say, look, let's give our employees ample time to prepare for storms such as this. Well, here in Duval County, people are starting to stock up on supplies. First Coast News' Angela Williams is on the south side where stores have been very busy with last-minute shoppers. You know, slowly but surely, people are making their way out, picking up a few things. It hasn't been a mad dash it's for the gas station. People have stopped to fill up, but nevertheless, they are picking up things they'll need to weather the storm. Two big dogs and one little girl. Amanda Drake and her husband say they aren't waiting till the last minute to stock up for the storm. So we're actually we're preparing for a power outage in the First Coast area. I've gone through it several, several times through hurricanes and storms, tornadoes and things like that. So that's my biggest thing. And she's not the only one with that idea. Several people have decided to play it safe heading to the store early for different items and not forgetting to fill up on gas, especially with prices running low. As for the pets, Winnie and Harley, the Drakes have that covered too. It pets need one gallon uh, per pet, so we have two, and that's two gallons, so we're looking at five gallons for the whole entire family. That's a lot of water to stock up for each day. And with a little two-year-old by your side, when the weather rolls in, you have to be ready to improvise. Likes to play with pots and pans, have a good time, so. Getting ready for the just-in-case seems to be the common theme, having things in place so it's better safe than sorry. We're just going to try to prepare for the best and hope for, you know, the very best and not the worst. Now, Mayor Payton and the Red Cross are urging people to make sure you have your family kit ready, things like batteries, water. Also, make sure you go to the ATM because if the power goes out, you won't be able to go to an ATM. These are all things you want to do now so you don't wait till the last minute. But now we're live on the south side. Angela Williams, First Coast News, your news leader. Yep, good advice. Thanks, Angela. Well, the First Coast coastline was a popular spot for those trying to see the beach before the storm. Tonight, we take you to St. Augustine Beach, which is where we find First Coast News Lindy Thaxton. Hey, Shannon, there are actually still some people out here taking a look, wanting to get a last glimpse. A lot of people have been walking up and down this stretch of St. Augustine Beach. On a more serious note, the wind you can tell is picking up out here, and there is a big concern for erosion up in Volano Beach, all the way down here south, and you can see the water already coming up and splashing up against this seawall. No rain dance needed. It's coming. Folks out on St. Augustine Beach surfing, snapping pictures, taking advantage of the wind, all while they still can. It's beautiful out here. We love it. We love the way it's, it's approaching to the ocean. It makes the ocean look beautiful. Especially to Rebecca Gatto and her husband and five-year-old son. We live in Albany, upstate New York. And they're about to relocate here. So while some families decide whether or not to leave the home, the Gatos are trying to get into one. We heard from the, about the storm when we got here, and we got here on Sunday, this past Sunday, and we have been listening to the news about the trajectory and where it's going and everything. The erosion just feet away, the waves rolling higher and higher, none of it deterring the Gatos, who know it's just part of life when you call the First Coast home. So the latest here from St. John's County from the EOC, they're operating at a level three. That means as of this point, no evacuations at all needed. As for school here in St. John's County, they don't actually start until Friday. So as for classes, that is just a wait and see. For now, reporting live in St. Augustine Beach, Lindy Thaxton, First Coast News, your news leader. Lindy, thank you very much. Some of the worst damage we've seen so far from Faye is down in Central Florida. At least two people were injured and 54 homes damaged after a tornado touched down in Barefoot Bay. That's in Brevard County. Nine buildings were destroyed there. Another tornado damaged a gas station and flipped over a car. Our team coverage continues now with reporter Preston Rudy in Cocoa Beach, near where Faye is expected to make her exit into the Atlantic tonight. Center of this storm system hasn't even gotten here yet. So uh, we expect that we're going to get more of the same over the next couple of hours. But really, in terms of what people think about Faye, it all depends on who you talk to, because opinions about this storm system also vary greatly. 
It is probably not a surprise that Faye brought out the usual host of gawkers on Tuesday. It's amazing, man. It's nice. That's Mother Nature for you right there. Some came for pictures, some to experience the wind, others to actually venture out into the ocean. It's going to be one of the few chances you get out to see a wind like this, to see the wave like this. And, I don't know, people just don't do this. They usually run from it. I wanted to run into it today. As Faye rumbled towards Florida's east coast, it brought intense rain. Flooded some streets and forced a majority of area businesses to close for the day. Even Ron John's surf shop, which is typically open 24 hours a day, shut its doors because of the storm. One place, however, that did stay open was Rum Runners in Cocoa Beach. Keith Voltz joked he was there to drown his sorrows as a construction worker. Faye has temporarily shut down his business. The building is already slow as it is, so this is not conducive for me at all. And then to make matters worse, Faye knocked out the power leaving everyone at Rum Runners in the dark. It doesn't help with business, does it? No, it doesn't. It's dead now. We're done. At least he's smiling, right? Well, that was Preston Rudy reporting for us from Cocoa Beach tonight. The state emergency response team has activated the Florida Emergency Information Line. That toll-free number is 1-800-342-3557. If you don't already have a First Coast News Hurricane Guide, Pick one up at McDonald's or Walgreens for all the latest information on storm safety. And we made it easy for you to track Faye from anywhere. If you go to firstcoastnews.com and follow Faye with our storm track IMAP. Well, the short list just got even shorter. Barack Obama is said to be very close to revealing his running mate. That story is coming up. And the latest Doppler reveals the circulation center of Faye now on I-95 just south of Melbourne and just about ready to reach the coast. We'll see what that means for the first coast. Also ahead, one southeast Georgia town prepares for the possibility of Fay, while another First Coast community hopes not again, not in their neighborhood. Hope and pray that it don't hit us. If severe weather threatens while you're asleep, who'll call to warn you? I will. This is Tim Deegan with a severe weather warning. With our exclusive new service, First Coast News Weather Call. All you have to do is go to firstcoastnews.com, click on weather, and sign up. Then if weather conditions threaten your neighborhood, no matter what time it is, you'll hear from me fast. Get this great new service today for just $6.95 per year. First Coast News Weather Call, only from First Coast News. For your immediate area. Judges protect our community. Now, from your news leader, this is First Coast News at 11 with Donna Deegan, Shannon Ogden, Sports Director Dan Hicken, and Chief Meteorologist Tim Deegan. All right, there is the latest position on Faye. Tim is very busy, just to my right over in the Weather Center, keeping track of her, and he'll join us in just a few moments. Well, people living in one First Coast neighborhood paying very close attention to Faye, Four years after another tropical storm just wreaked havoc. In 2004, tropical storm Bonnie spawned a tornado on the north side that Damn destroyed about half a mile's worth of homes, cars, and businesses. Those who live in the area say they just aren't taking any chances with Fed. Happen again. It can happen to anybody. Uh, restaurant, business, home. I mean, and it's, you know, you just got to keep your fingers crossed. Yeah. Hope and pray that it don't hit us. Tropical storm Bonnie damaged 80 homes and cost the city millions of dollars in cleanup. And keep your camera phones handy, safely, but handy, as we deal with Faye over the next few days. We'd love to see what pictures you can generate. This one, this is from Styx. She's from Jacksonville. She's down in the Keys this week. Uh, you can see it's a little rainy there, but uh, they're going with the flow, having a good time. Upload your own pictures or view other pictures at firstcoastnews.com. They tend to go with the flow down there in the Keys. Yeah. They have inner tubes Kind of the deal. Yeah, yeah. They're, the, they're the rescue team. Uh, on a more serious side, of course, of lots of emails, we can focus them towards schools. And as you all have mentioned, if you go to firstcoastnews.com, whether it's pre-K, elementary, uh, community colleges, we have all those listed right. correct. Um, as far as the bridges are concerned, just as a reminder, it's pretty much as the local police decide. More than likely, the higher the bridge, the more significant a potential evacuation route, the longer they're going to keep those bridges open. My guess would be the bridges will be open all day on Wednesday. Uh, then there's also discussion about what about the airport. And officially, uh, the air traffic controllers have said they are there 
through the extent of the storm slash hurricane, and so it's totally up to the airline. So if you're wondering, uh, then call your airline. Okay, let's talk about what's happening meteorologically. There is what we call the infrared satellite picture. The more brilliant the color within the white, the stronger the showers and thunderstorms. And notice where the showers and thunderstorms are more over the ocean, and that tends to be a sign of where the low pressure center is headed. If you look closely here, though, you can still see a core. Certainly is not as well defined, but it's still there, and it's pretty much on the coast. Something else to notice here, and that is, notice this. These are called cirrus clouds. Those are up at about 30,000 feet, and whereas earlier today they were retreating, when I say retreating, they were mo uh, moving from the northwest toward the southeast. Notice what they're doing now, spreading off to the northwest and north. That tells us a couple things. Number one, a high-pressure area is developing over this low-pressure system. That's pretty classic for further intensification if it gets over warmer water. And the steering currents are no longer saying uh, more west to east. They're saying more east to west. And so the whole transition is really beginning here, and that's why the forecast is so iffy because at the same time that indications are this could intensify because it's about ready to hit the ocean, indications also are that it's about ready to start moving back to the west, which would keep it over land. So there's still some big iffiness here, folks. With that said, though, the official forecast is it goes over the ocean before it heads back over land and intensifies, becomes a hurricane, and that's why pretty much nearly all of the first coast is under a hurricane watch. Flagler Beach all the way to Altamaha Sound, and for those of you who don't know, that is the county line or, or the sound that marks the county line between Glen County and McIntosh County, which is pretty much we think of Glen County as being the northernmost county of the first coast. Okay, so how strong will it be? Computer models vary from a strong tropical storm to something even stronger than a Category 1. And that's why, um, to be honest with you, concerned about this system being stronger than a Category 1. But for now, the good news is it actually finally weakened. Sustained to 50, gust to 60, 27.7, 80.7. But again, that was at 11. Uh, I think we can do a better job than that now and really say it's seriously the circulation centers on I-95 south of uh, Melbourne, which would be at about 27.8 north and about 80.5 west for those of you tracking it. And that is right about there. So it's just about ready to head offshore, probably about an hour behind the official forecast track. So it uh, looks like it's going to get out there and start drawing off of the warmer waters. Here's the official forecast. And this, this uh, wind field has not been updated since 5 o'clock because it has not changed any as far as the overall wind is concerned. So although we're talking about a Category 1, that would be a small area of sustained winds. And that's why really we're talking about widespread wind gust over 75 for Flagler, St. John's, Duval, and possibly into New, uh, Duval and then Nassau County. And that's why I think the mayor did a great job that is the mayor of Jacksonville in saying that with gust, widespread gust over 75, that would mean more power outages than we had in 2004, because in 2004 we had widespread wind gusts of over 65 miles per hour, but maybe not widespread sustained winds of 75 as long as it comes in as forecast. Again, if it goes farther off to the east and takes longer to come back west, we could be looking at stronger than a Category 1 hurricane. So just keep a close watch on the forecast. Here is a uh, closer look in case I went too fast uh, for what's going to happen. But again, I guarantee that this will be adjusted. Uh, north or south, pretty tough to say. The newest computer models all seem to converge now toward the first coast, somewhere between Brunswick and Daytona, the system finally coming ashore. Again, we don't have a core of thunderstorm activity, so there's some more good news, but with the getting offshore, could reignite. For salt lifers, again, tomorrow conditions will deteriorate. The windiest and wettest conditions and the higher surf conditions will be on Thursday. If this system does not become any stronger than a Category 1, I want to make sure that those of you who live along the river keep a close watch on the storm surge because I know there's been a lot of discussion, even from the mayor, about what the storm surge means for the beaches. But if we get only a 3 to 5 foot storm surge, although that certainly means a big beach erosion problem, most structures at the beaches will be fine. 
The bigger problem will be along the St. John's River that will rise three to five feet, and thus we'll have some problems with docks and boats and whatnot. Uh, so here's a few of our emails. This is from Brian. What is the frequency of the radio station we'll be turned to in the event of a power outage of an impending storm? Our sister station will be 1010XL. We're familiar with that. That's Dan's station. He's on, on the, there with on sports, AM. right? And then uh, FM will be 105.3. Uh, that would probably happen if the hurricane warning is imminent. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Tim. Well, the mystery will be solved Saturday at the latest. Barack Obama's running mate will join him on stage Saturday at a rally in Springfield, Illinois. Obama and whoever will appear in front of the old Capitol building where Abraham Lincoln once served. It is also the site of where Obama announced he was running for president. John McCain's campaign made a stop in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico today. McCain used a visit to a Chevron oil platform to call for increased offshore drilling that he claims would lower the cost of food and heating homes. McCain flew 130 miles by helicopter to tour the enormous facility, and he criticized Obama for not supporting such a plan. And when we come back, we'll take a visit to the north and see how they're getting ready up there. St. Mary's prepares for Faye. Stay with us. It's Toyota's now. Well, right now the hurricane watch extends north to Glen County, McIntosh County, and to that line there in Georgia. And people there also are preparing for just whatever Faye has in store. Team coverage continues with First Coast News' Eric Spivey. Trying to prepare for war in the time of peace. <laughs> That's what it is. At Langs Marina in St. Mary's. Finally in Georgia. Crews spend the day watching the latest weather reports and tying down the boats. And some of the larger ones, like the Cumberland Princess, are moved closer to shore. We make sure that everybody got the right amount of fenders out. Across town, tourists are still soaking up the shore, unaware of the approaching storm. Places along the waterway could be very flooded. But emergency managers warned Faye could bring high winds and heavy rain by Thursday. Thursday. The evacuation orders have not been issued. Everything is status quo for right now. But again, that's based on current forecasts. Anything could change. With this storm, we see numerous changes. Back at the marina, Matt Wilson is heading home for the day. Of course, I will be back. But he knows face path could require an extended stay very soon. In St. Mary's, Georgia, Eric Spivey, First Coast News, your news leader. Tomorrow, schools in Georgia are open. And then school leaders will meet at 11 tomorrow morning, this morning, actually, um, and make a decision about Thursday. Well, the Jaguars also are keeping a close eye on the storm. They sure are. Here what Coach Del Rio has to say about the weather and what it could mean for their practices. That's up next. Hey, Mr. Opportunity here. I've got some really good economic news for you. It's Honda. First Coast News Weather Plus on Comcast Digital Cable Channel 201 and FirstCoastNews.com is brought to you by Keith Pearson Toyota Scion. I think I got it. Good. Hi, Dan. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. We need morning. a dome. We need a dome over the stadium, perhaps. Yes, and if Jack is offering it up to the people of Jacksonville to go over there and play, maybe we could get that ice cube, that cube thing they have. Oh, yeah. Over they're not going to use it anymore. They're, they're going to be done with it in like a half a week. Transfer yeah. it over here, maybe. Uh, Jaguars back to work today, but keeping an eye on what's going on with the weather. And then, ironically, I had to practice in the rain today, and Denny Northcutt could not could not hold it. He got a, three times he couldn't hold it. Jack talked about the weather plan. We're making plans in case uh, all of the predictions are true and there's a lot of bad weather here tomorrow to, you know, move our plans indoors. So. Back in the busy hurricane season of 04, remember that? We saw the Jaguars practice indoors at the Prime Osborne Convention Center. Now, there's some NFL, there's some college teams that have the benefit of having their own indoor practice facility to use, but the Jaguars don't. Del Rio wouldn't mind seeing that change. I'll go ahead and take one more shot at, you know, that bubble would be nice, you know. Uh, you know, Wayne, if you were listening, <laughs> uh, Mayor Payton, there'd be a nice bubble here. The city of Jacksonville could use it, right? We're all for it. Uh, good news on the injury front is both N. King and Mincy may be able to be back before the start of the year. Uh, Jack says they'll stay on schedule, not change the way they do things. Nothing new to report on the rookie holdout around the league. Cincinnati brings back Chris Henry at wide receiver. The Falcons cut loose longtime veteran receiver Joe Horn. And look who's back for the Colts. Peyton Manning practicing for the first time this year. It has not been a pain-free uh, process. Uh, I'd be lying if I said that. Uh, that is my goal, uh, to be ready you know, for that uh, first game. 
couple college football notes. Gators holding a scrimmage today in Gainesville. Emmanuel Moody, big day. In fact, the running backs, a weak spot one season ago, may be a strength with Moody, Chris Rainey, true freshman Jeff Demps, and Keystan Moore. Meantime, in Tallahassee, Tavares Presley finally cleared by the NCAA can practice with the Knowles uh, beginning this evening. Hey, it's the Mets and the Braves. And two teams heading in different directions. Jeff Francoeur with the RBI right here on the sack fly, though. Chipper scores 3-2 Braves. Bottom of the eighth, still 3-2. Mets have the bases loaded. Three for their last 42 with the sacks filled. Delgado, Delgado. And what it does is it allows us to sing this little ditty. Meet the Mets. Meet the Mets. Step right up and greet the Mets. Come on, everybody at home. Bring your kitties. Bring your wife. Jimmy, guaranteed to have the time of your life. Hey, there's a guy who had the time God, of his life. That's great. There's uh, Phelps. There's Spitz. That's 8-7. to seven. Scoreboard, Mark, uh, said Michael. Radio tomorrow, unless you weather people interrupt us. <laughs> you know what? I think, if I'm not mistaken, I saw on the newsletter, I think it's Cush's birthday today. The 20th. Yeah. What's that? When it's is that? It's the 20th now. Yo, gets engaged, has a birthday. Happy birthday, What a Kush. week for Happy the Cush man. Happy birthday, Cush. Right. Yeah, We're going to take a break. Week. Be right back. Gotta go. All makes and models. All right, there's our five day look. We will be updating this, but for now, it still looks like the windiest and the wettest, that is the stormiest of the weather, will be from Wednesday night through Friday morning. And we'll have updates, incidentally, through the early morning hours every hour. All right, and tomorrow on uh, Good Morning Jacksonville, uh, we're going to be announcing the shelters that are going to be opening here on the First Coast. So make sure you join us for that tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock. All right, thank you for joining us tonight. And of course, the news continues at firstcoastnews.com. The weather guys, you're never leaving, so rest assured.